Welcome, girls and boys. It's so nice to see everyone. I see at the bottom there's a speaker. Miss, Miss, Miss Kamola, can you Miss Kamola, can you say hello? Okay. But how come they see the Hi, boys and girls. It's so exciting to be here with you today on a virtual field trip. We'll have lots of fun. Boys and girls, we're just going to wait a couple more minutes um, for some more friends to join us and then we're going to get started. I'm going to unmute Mr. Segretti so he can say hello too. Hi, Mr. Segretti. Hi, Ms. McKenna. Hi, Ms. Hatsopoulos. Oh, Jessica? Yes. Hi, Mr. Segretti. Hi, Miss. Say, say hi to the boys and girls. Hi, boys and girls. I miss you. I can't wait for this trip. Miss Blasloff, I'm going to unmute you so you could say hello too for a second. Hi, boys and girls. We miss you. Miss Hen, I'm going to unmute you because so you could say hello. Hello, boys and girls. How are you? I miss you all so much. I'm so happy to see all your faces. Wow, I see a lot of familiar faces. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to be here on this virtual field trip. Thank you so much. Hello, Mrs. Sapolis. Hello, Mrs. McKenna. Hello. Oh, hello, Ms. Blazov. Oh, I see a lot of you. Great, thank you.
Hi, everyone. I'm so excited for our virtual field trip. It's Mrs. Taylor. And everyone looks so cozy at home. And I see the Talises are in outer space. Is there something special here? I wonder if I can change my background. Let's see. I'm going to go to that little toolbar. Now, I don't think I have that special ability that you guys have. Let me see. Video settings, no. Leave me, no. I don't want to leave the meeting. There's 71 participants. That is amazing. I can't believe to burn all the horse breath. Because I don't know about you. Have you ever seen a horse? I, I know you can't talk to me right now. But I think I've seen one at Morgan's Park in Blind Cove. Right where you live. Because we're right so we're surrounded by water. And I think they they washed up the shore. I've seen them, but I haven't seen them moving. Well, this Miss Hajak, do you want to say hello? Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to see you all. So I'm wondering I'm really if you've seen one too when you. <laughs> The more Taylor's still talking. <laughs> Mrs. Taylor's or on a delay. I had to. <laughs> or possibly Kristen. Oh, wait. She's trying to think of other beaches around us. Maybe Jones Beach has it. Uh, let's see. I think I've seen one before. They're very interesting looking, aren't they? And I bet you have a lot of questions. And I bet Miss Santoro knows all your questions too, because I think she was on Seesaw and she was compiling all your questions that we should be putting all the questions together. So my child is with me. Miss Hayjack, Miss Taylor was on delay, so you can go ahead and you can say hello now. Hi, everybody. We're so excited to see you. We're going to have a lot of fun. Oh, she always says that. <laughs> So boys and girls, we're going to get started in just a minute. Um, Miss Santoro is having some technical difficulties, so but she'll be on in a second. Um, Miss Brian, do you want to welcome everyone on behalf of the PTA? Sure. Um, I, I don't know if you can see me. Um, yeah, I can. Okay. 
we just wanted to say thank you for all of the students and teachers and also to the Waterfront Center for helping host this uh, virtual field trip. We know that sometimes doing things in person is limited right now, so we're trying to do something to connect everyone and get everyone together as much as possible. So we have this and then we also have the secret readers yeah. on Fridays too, but we wanted to thank everyone for coming and being a part of this today and we're going to have a lot of fun. So thank you. So we want to say thank you um, to the PTA for facilitating this because without them, we wouldn't, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you so much. We're going to turn it over now to the Waterfront Center and that's going to be with Juliana. So everybody wave to Juliana. Hi, how are you guys doing? I'm Juliana. <laughs> I'm from the Waterfront Center. You guys usually come to us, but today we're coming to you online. Yeah. So today we're going to learn all about horseshoe crabs. Uh, first, we're going to read a little story, and then I'm going to take out our live horseshoe crab, and then you guys are going to be able to see it, and we're going to learn about all the cool things about it, all right? So we're going to be reading High Tide for Horseshoe Crabs right you guys ready awesome all right you guys can see it i'll bring it a little closer all right it's starting one spring night the first horseshoe crab lunges onto shore they're arriving more horseshoe crabs follow just as generations have done since before the time of the dinosaurs, adult horseshoe crabs crawl from the muck of their winter horns and swim toward the land. Millions of horseshoe crabs head for Delaware Bay. High tides carry them far up onto the beach where their eggs will be developed. You guys can all see them climbing up to the shore. They're flapping. On flickering wings, flocks of shorebirds fly through wind and rain. Through day and night, some of these birds weigh only as much as a handful of paper clips. Still, they are powerful enough to fly thousands of miles from South America all the way up to the Arctic, where they will lay their eggs. One of the few stops they make along the way is short. So all of the birds are coming. They're traveling. Scientists journey to Delaware Bay from around the world. Some come to study the horseshoe crabs. Others come to study the birds. Citizen scientists, both adults and children, come year after year to observe and help the professional scientists gather data. Families on vacation, curious about commotions, all stop to watch. So many people come to this beach just to see the birds and the horseshoe crabs. They're laying. So many horseshoe crabs crowd the shore that their shells clatter against one another. Each female horseshoe crab with a male clinging to her back searches for a bare patch of sand. She burrows down and lays a golf ball sized cluster of small green eggs. Her digging disturbs other horseshoe crab eggs, exposing them to waves and sun. So there are so many that they're all on top of each other. They're landing. Bony and weak, the migration shorebirds arrive in Delaware Bay. They are hungry, very, very hungry. So they're both there at the same time. Julian, I wonder if any of our smart, smart Griffin School students can make a connection. Can anyone else think of an animal that lays its eggs on the beach, even though it lives in the ocean? Hmm. An animal that lays its eggs on the beach, even though it lives in the ocean. Mac, do you know? What do you think, Mac? Um, a fish? Maybe. Does anyone else have another guess? Hmm. Hmm. Carmine? A sea turtle. 
a sea turtle is the animal that I was thinking of. Sea turtles yeah. also lay their eggs on the beach. That's exactly right. And they do the same thing as horseshoe crabs where they go back to the same exact spot, which is super cool. All right, so here you can see it says it's happening. So people are seeing the horseshoe crabs and they actually tag them. So you see that little white circle? They put little tags on them, it doesn't hurt them. It's just to make sure that we can keep track of them and we know how many horseshoe crabs we have and where they've been. They're tagging. Scientists tag horseshoe crabs each spring, months or even years later when people find tagged horseshoe crabs on the beach and report them, scientists learn answers to basic questions. How far does this animal travel? How long does it live? How many horseshoe crabs are out there in the sea? So it's just to keep track of them. It doesn't hurt them in any way. They're feasting. The birds find an easy meal. Tiny, nutritious horseshoe crab eggs float in the water. They drift along the tide line. They mix in with the sand. The bird's long beaks are just right for digging. During the two weeks a bird spends along the shores of Delaware Bay, it gobbles so many thousands of horseshoe crab eggs that it may double its body weight. So they're eating all of their eggs. They're growing. Plenty of little green horseshoe crab eggs rest deep in the sand, protected from pointy bird beaks, scientists, probes, and crashing waves. Each day inside each egg, a shapeless bundle of cells begins to look more and more like a miniature horseshoe crab. So they're starting to grow into a real animal. And then they're leaving. One evening, when their bodies are fat and the wind is just right, whoosh, in a world of wings, the birds leave. Some stragglers keep feeding for a few more days, but most of the birds zoom up to the Arctic to lay their own eggs. So the birds finally go away and the horseshoe crabs have a chance. They're leaving. Scientists and vacationers brush sand off their binoculars they pack up data sheets, beach chairs, and stories, then return home to share what they've learned. They're leaving too. Most adult horseshoe crabs ride tides and currents back into deep water. Others won't reach water quickly enough though and will die on the shore. About two weeks later, the young horseshoe crabs burst from their eggs now nearly the size of ladybugs, they crawl from the moist sand and swim away to begin their own journey. It's over. Until next year. So you can see all the horseshoe crabs swimming back into the water. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys a real horseshoe crab. The one that we have that's alive is actually still pretty young. It's probably around your age. Here's our horseshoe crab. I don't know if any of you have seen this before, probably on the beach, maybe just a shell of it. You can see it's alive because it's moving around. Mm -hmm. the bottom of it. So like I said, this one's still young, it's tiny. Mm -hmm. and many people, when they see it, they get very scared. They think that they're gonna get hurt, especially when they see this tail. But horseshoe crabs, what's really awesome about them is that they're actually totally harmless. They can't bite you because they don't really have any teeth and their legs are super, super soft that they can't hurt you and their tails are not poisonous at all. The only way that you can get hurt is if maybe you step on their little pointy, they have little pointy things on their shells to kind of protect them. The horseshoe crabs are super cool. They have an exoskeleton, so that's the shell, and the shell is really hard. And they get their name horseshoe crab because their body, their head is shaped like a horseshoe. And they actually have 10 eyes, which is super cool. So we only see two, right? These two right here, and those are their main seeing eyes, and the other ones are super small. They have two, which kind of look like their nose, but those are eyes and then the rest of them are kind of on the bottom and they actually have a couple on their tail. 
And those are more like sensors, letting them sense things around. And they actually kind of see in the dark, which is really cool. And even though they have 10 eyes, it's actually, they have really bad eyesight, which is kind of funny. And then they have 10 legs. So you guys can see all their legs right there, kind of moving around. And that's actually their mouth right there in the middle. They are the only species left in the world that has their mouth in the middle of all their legs. And then they have two little top legs right there. And then they have their, their gills. Their gills are so they can breathe. But horseshoe crabs are actually really good and they can stay out of water for about an hour without any water, which is cool. Horseshoe crabs are super special and they actually almost haven't changed at all. They are the fifth oldest species in the world. They are 450 million years old. That is way, way older than dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are only like 60 million years old. So these guys have been around about 400 million years more than dinosaurs. And when you look at them, they kind of look like a historical, like fossil almost, right? We don't really see many animals that look like this anymore. Horseshoe crabs are actually really special and they can actually um, live up to like 20 to 25 years, which is a long time for marine animals. The only other animal that probably lives that long as, or longer are turtles. The reason why they can live so long is actually a couple things. They actually have blue blood. So we have red blood because we have iron in our blood, but they actually have copper. So that's what makes it blue. And they have a very special enzyme inside of their body. They have something very special in their body where they actually never get sick. Isn't that amazing? So that special little protein, if something goes inside of their body, it just clumps up like this and then their body just gets rid of it and they never get sick. And we actually use that for us. So what humans do is they take out that little enzyme in their body and we test our vaccine with it. So if anyone's ever gotten a shot before, when they go to the doctor, that shot has been tested with horseshoe crab blood. And what that horseshoe crab blood is, it makes sure that that vaccine is safe for bodies because that vaccine is a very, very low amount of a certain, um, of a certain disease or of a certain kind of medicine and they want to make sure it's safe for our body. So it has to be tested with horseshoe crab blood, which is super cool. Another reason why they've actually lived 450 million years it's because they can live in all different kinds of temperature. They can live in super cold water, hot water, and they can even live in ice, which is super cool. So their bodies are very special like that. And then you guys can see its tail moving around, right? They use their tail kind of like a steering wheel in a car. They use it to swim. Also, when it's flipped over like this, it doesn't really like it because their body, this is their squishy part, and they have nothing protecting it right because the top part protects them this part is very hard this part is not so hard so it sticks down its tail just like that and if my hand was sand it would dig into it and it flips over which is super cool so if you guys ever see a horseshoe crab on the beach and you see that it's alive you don't want to pick it up by its tail because if you pick it up by its tail it might fall off right so it won't be able to flip over also, it kind of hurts them. We like to say sometimes it's like lifting you up by your ear and it wouldn't feel so good, right? So you wouldn't want to do that to them. Could I ask a quick question? Yeah, of course. A lot of kids were wondering about the horseshoe crab's tail. And we got a lot of questions on Seesaw about the tail, if the tail could hurt them or if it hurts the horseshoe crab. So thank you for bringing that up about the tail. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people will see a tail like this and they think about rays, right? Like stingrays. But stingrays, their tail is a bit more floppier and they could, those could hurt, but this is solid. This is hard and it can't hurt you at all. It's literally just there just to help them swim and flip over. It's just there. And actually you see a lot of horseshoe crabs, sometimes they lose their tails. And for them, it's a little bit harder to live because they won't be able to flip over. And if they're on land like this, an animal, remember how in our book, there was animals and there was birds and horseshoe crabs, the birds can come in and just eat the inside. So horseshoe crabs don't like to be like that. 
So they flip over just like this. Also, I want you guys to see, we said they're gills before, right? So the gills are like what other fish have to breathe, but I can actually touch them because they have something called an operculum. An operculum is like a little door that they make to protect it, which is super awesome. Do you guys have any specific questions about our horseshoe crab? Can I just say one more thing, guys? It's Miss Santoro. I just, before we entertain questions, I just really, really, really wanted to thank you so much for doing this vir virtual field trip for us. We were so excited, and I think this is the most people we've ever had on at once. So I just want to give a shout out to the Oyster Bay Waterfront Center, to our friend Cameron and Juliana and Shannon, who work with us every year when we take a field trip um, in real life to the Waterfront Center, which we were unable to do this year. So the, the, we really liked the book, the pictures sent us, and seeing the, the horseshoe crab because I know the kids are really, really excited to see it. Awesome. So you already answered a question about the tail. And could you just address about what the, um, we got a lot of questions, like over 50 questions about what do horseshoe crabs like to eat? Great question. Yeah, that's a very common one. So horseshoe crabs, they do have their little legs. So they usually like to hang out on the bottom of the water. So they like, they're almost like bottom feeders. So they just hang out. Sometimes they swim on their back, but they usually like to stick to the bottom of the ocean or the bay or wherever they live. And because of that, they're actually scavengers. So scavengers means that they will eat pretty much whatever that they can find, usually something that's dead. So you guys sometimes might think of predators, right? So predators are animals that go and hunt other animals. But horseshoe crabs, they're not very picky. They just kind of walk around, whatever they can find, and then they eat it. So I kind of said before that horseshoe crabs don't really have teeth. So you guys can see their mouth. That's their mouth right there. And I can put my finger in there because they don't have teeth. They have little tiny bristles like your toothbrush. So because of that, they can't really eat hard things, right? So they take their legs and they grind up the food with their legs and then they kind of scoop it into their mouth. So they're kind of walking and eating at the same time, whatever they can find on the bottom. Do we have any other questions? Ms. Santoro, were there any other questions from the students when they sent them to you on Seesaw? One was, how do horseshoe crabs walk? But you addressed that. Yeah, so they have their little legs. They're pretty soft. They um, mostly, they're not very strong walkers. So they usually rely on the movement of the water to bring them up to shore. As we saw in our book, they wait for the tide to get high to push them all the way up to where they need to go to drop their eggs. And then once they drop their eggs, they kind of wait for the tide to bring them back out because usually they're not strong enough and maybe a bird will catch them. So they'll drop their eggs. And also, I forgot to tell you a cool fact is when they put their eggs, they drop from 60 to 120,000 eggs. So that's a lot, a lot of eggs. And we also brought up sea turtles before. Sea turtles do something very similar. And the reason why, does anyone know why they would use a lot of eggs? Let's see if someone's raising their hand that we can call on. Why do you think they lay so many eggs? Do birds lay that many eggs all at once? Hmm. Could you unmute uh, the one that says Diane, D-I-A-H-A-N-N, -N, and call on Daniel because he's had his hand up? Sure. Thank you. Okay, Daniel, go ahead. Um, how, do the how does the horseshoe crab stick its tail up in the air? Because I don't think cheetahs can stick it straight up or leopards. It's just the muscle that they have, right? So this is not a real horseshoe crab. This is just a diagram. But they have a special muscle that they can control it, kind of like a dog controls their tail. It's the same kind of idea. But I'll answer you guys a question. So this is a diagram. Do you guys see all those little green dots in there? 
they're just kind of floating around, right? Those are actually all eggs. So when it's time for this horseshoe crab to go up to shore and lay all of its eggs, it's going to just drop them and their body just has them scattered all over. And the reason why there are so many is just like what we found out in the book. A lot of them get eaten by, our, by the birds that are just hanging around. So they lay a lot of eggs and then just a few of those will survive and able to make their way back into the water. The same thing happens with sea turtles. And you guys will be able to see this horseshoe crab is very, very large. I'll bring our friend out here. This horseshoe crab is still very, very young. And this one is a full grown female horseshoe crab. The females are the biggest out of the two, the male and the female. The males are a little bit smaller. And the way that horseshoe crabs grow, it's actually something called molts. So molting is very similar to how snakes kind of let go of their skin. The horseshoe crab does basically the same thing. They regrow their exoskeleton in the inside, and then they just walk right out. And they do that about 15 times until they're an adult. And then the females go all the way up to about 20 years. And then they become this big. So if you ever see a really big horseshoe crab on the beach, it's because you see a female. And actually something that female horseshoe crabs do, when they get to 20 to 25 years old, they're very big. They've had many, many eggs, many babies, and they think they're done. They can't have any more. They actually go up to the very top, high tide line. So if you're ever at the beach and you see a line of seaweed, most of the time you'll see horseshoe crabs up there. The female thinks it's time for her to finish and they go all the way up to there and they just hang out there and they dry out. So usually if you see a horseshoe crab up there, it's because they chose to be there. So it wasn't anything bad. Wow, that's really an amazing fact. Yeah, they're super cool. Very smart animals. Did you guys know that it was older than a dinosaur horseshoe crab? That's crazy. Yeah, they're way older. Miss Santoro, Nicholas um, T has a question, so I think we're gonna unmute him and let him ask his question. Okay, great. Um, the question that a lot of hunts to asked, like, because they lay a lot of eggs, because a lot of the eggs will die. Yeah, that's very true, yeah. So they lay a lot of eggs to make sure that some of them find their way back to the water, right? It's kind of to ensure that they have them, yeah. The birds eat them or the people might hurt them. You never know, so it's awesome. Nicholas, thank you for answering that question. Um, Juliana, can you just mention the name of the bird that eats? I don't know if we spoke about that earlier, the name of the bird that relies on the horseshoe crab's eggs. Yeah, so those are the gulls, right? So you guys know them as seagulls, the ones that hang out on the beach, right? So they migrate from all the way from South America, so from the warm weather, all the way up to the Arctic, the cold weather, and they make a stop at beaches, right? So then they tend to be at the same exact time that the horseshoe crabs are mating. So that's why they come and they snack on all of the horseshoe crab eggs and then they make their way back up. So it's kind of happens at the same time. So it's like the horseshoe crab almost knew and had a couple extra eggs to make sure they end up back in the water. Thank you. I know the Talese family had a question, so I'm gonna unmute them. Okay, she got it. Um, what is the predator of the horseshoe crab? Sorry, can you say it again? Uh, what is the predator of the horseshoe crab? The predator? Um, so we'll be talked about the seagull, right? The seagull eats it. And sometimes the seagull won't just eat just the eggs. It'll also eat the actual horseshoe crab, right? So we said that if a horseshoe crab is on its back like this and its body is exposed, they can just come in and eat all of this because this is its meat. This part is soft and the birds can actually go through it. And in the water, not too many animals will actually eat it because they have their hard shell and they hang out in the water like this. And nothing can really get through here and the horseshoe crab can just kind of run away. So it's mainly when they're on the shore 
on the beach that they could be eaten. So they're, that's why they've lived for so long because they have that really strong armor. Great question. Luciana? Um, I, I want a question. Um, like, where do the um, Hoshi crabs live? That's a great question, actually. We are super lucky because these horseshoe crabs only live on the East Coast, so on the side of the country that we are. And we're actually lucky because right around our area and Delaware is where most of them are. So we're super, super lucky because these are really kind of rare animals and you don't see too many of them. So most people won't even know what these are if they see them. So we're super lucky. They live on the East Coast. And some of, there's other species of them that live in other areas, but this is our main type, especially in this area. So if you guys go to a beach, you'll most likely find these. Awesome question. Mrs. Lathopoulos, one of our first grade teachers had a question. So Juliana, you said something very interesting. You said that scientists use their blue blood. How do they get the blood out of the horseshoe crab? That's a great question. They actually use like a needle. So you guys see this little part right here? Usually that moves and it kind of becomes a little soft. So they put a needle in there and they only take out about 20% of its blood. So it's still alive. It won't hurt the horseshoe crab, which is really good. And then once they take the blood out, they can take that special enzyme out of it, which is really good. And it doesn't hurt the horseshoe crab and they can just put the horseshoe crabs back and they'll, just like when we give blood, it's like the same idea. Thank you. Yeah. Gabriella from second grade had a question, so I'm gonna unmute her. Gabby, you had a question from second grade. Okay, how long do they live for? How long do they live for? Awesome question. They can live um, up to like 25 years. Usually the most common is 20, but they can go up to like 25, 30 if they're a very special horseshoe crab, which is a lot because usually fish only live maybe a couple weeks or if they're like the really big ones, they'll live a couple years. So 20 years is a really long time. Wow. And think about it, like every single year, they get a little bit bigger. They go through that molt. And the molt is really big, like the one we just showed you. Joey P, do you have a question? Um, what happens if the same, like, scientist takes the same exact blood from the same horseshoe crab? Um, they won't do that. They'll keep them separated. Scientists will keep special tags on them. Remember how we said they tag them sometimes? So they'll have their numbers written down and they're very careful. Scientists have to write everything down, have the numbers, everything separated. So they're very careful with it, not to hurt the horseshoe crab. Juliana, I have another question. This is Mrs. Hetzopoulos. So we, we are surrounded by water here. We are so lucky where we live. And you said that the horseshoe crabs live on the East Coast. So do we know, do scientists know, or do you know how many horseshoe crabs live around here? Oh, I don't think we know. I think that's the reason why we, they do the tagging. So I'll show you guys the picture again. You see that little white circle? That's the tag that you put on them. And the reason of that is so we know how many are around here. Like we said, migrating before, how the birds migrate. Horseshoe crabs do the same thing. They move around. They usually stay kind of in the same area because they have to go onto, oh, perfect. We actually have, this is the shell of a horseshoe crab and this is a real tag. Wow. Actually here in Oyster Bay, we have special tagging. And this usually happens like in the middle of the night because that's when the horseshoe crabs come up onto the shore here in Oyster Bay. But everywhere it kind of changes. 
So they'll come onto shore and you kind of hold them down a little bit and you put this onto their shell and it won't come off. It stays on there very strong. And don't worry, it doesn't hurt the horseshoe crab at all. And they'll put it on there. And then if you're at the beach and you actually see a horseshoe crab with that number, you can actually go onto the internet, put that number on there, and then it'll show you facts about that horseshoe crab. And sometimes they even send you a horseshoe crab pin. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's so great. That's Thank you. Very important. So we have a kindergarten friend. I don't know his name because I don't teach kindergarten, but it's Alicia Andrus. Oh. The name? Hi, honey. Can you ask your question? Do the baby horseshoe crabs stay with their mother? Oh, that's a good question. Do the baby horseshoe crabs stay with their mother? Oh, they actually don't. It's <laughs> many animals. Yeah, just like um, we're very different. Humans are very different because they stay there and they take care of their babies. But a lot of animals actually don't do that. So what they do is they will lay their eggs and then the male will fertilize them, right? And then the big crab, they go back into the water and then the eggs will finally hatch. And then those little tiny, tiny horseshoe crabs have to find their way to the water. So the, the big mom just kind of leaves them on the beach and kind of waits for them in the water. I wonder if that's why they lay so many eggs because there's no one to take care of those babies after they hatch. So you have to lay so many of them so more would survive. Exactly, right? It's like the horseshoe crab knows that some of them need to find their way there. Some of them won't find their way there. So that's why they have so many eggs. Exactly. Ryder, would you like to ask your question? Um, yes. How big do they get? Um, here, I'll show you this one. This is usually the biggest that they'll get, depending where you are. I've actually seen some pictures of like even bigger ones, but those are very rare. But this is usually the size of a full grown female. This is how big she will get. And I showed you get before. This is our other one that's maybe only like 10 years old. So that's pretty big. Awesome. Let's see, Sienna? Oh. You can say it for Wendy. Is, how can you tell if a horseshoe is a boy or a girl? Awesome question. All right, so it's actually kind of hard to tell just by looking at them when they're this old. They actually have to be about like 10 or 15 years old until we can finally tell if it's a boy or a girl. For it to be a girl, first we know by its size, right? So if we see a horseshoe crab this gigantic, we know it's a girl right away. But if we don't know how old it is or its size, you actually have to look at its legs. So you guys see their top little legs up here? You see those right there? They kind of look like a peace sign, right? So we say if they still keep their peace sign when they're older, that means that they're a female. And then the males kind of have something that looks like this, kind of like a hook. And if they have that, that's a male. And the reason why males have that is because they hook onto the back of the female and the female gives them a ride to shore. So the female is the big one. They're kind of like the boss or the one that brings the male horseshoe crabs around. Boys and girls, can anyone think of their horseshoe crab, its shell, it reminds me a little bit of something that you might wear on your head when you ride your bike or maybe like a scooter. What does it remind you a little bit of? Orietta, what does it remind you of? Um, if you're riding a bike or you're wearing a, riding a scooter, sometimes you wear it on your head. A helmet? Yeah, why do you think? The horseshoe crab needs a helmet. So then it can stay protected. Yeah, just like it can protect our horse. What's really, really cool about science is sometimes engineers get ideas from science and that's when they build and they make things. So that's something called biomimicry. Can you try saying that? Biomimicry. It's a tricky word. 
Yeah, biomimicry is really awesome. A lot of things that we actually see around us are based off of animals, which is super cool because bio means life and mimicry means imitate, right? To copy life, basically. And actually our helmets, someone came up with that idea from a woodpecker. You guys know what woodpeckers do? They go like this, right? Against trees. So they have very strong skulls. So they actually got that. And the NFL uses helmets that are based off of a woodpecker's skull, which is super cool. That is well, great. It's amazing, Juliana, how you related this to so many things in our real life that we can relate to. I have a question for you. Have you ever seen such smart kids in kindergarten, first or second grade? I haven't. You guys have such amazing questions. Uh, well, I have one more question. Um, and I think we're going to, that's going to be it for today. So our last friend, hold on one second, is she wants to know, hold on, I have to unmute her. Allison, can you ask your really, really smart question that you had? Um, how, how do they sleep? That's a great question. Like a lot of other animals in the water, they actually just kind of like, you probably can't tell that they're actually sleeping, most of them. Some of them like fish will keep just kind of floating, but some just kind of find a little corner and they just kind of stay still. That's basically how they sleep. <laughs> they just kind of, and it's not the same kind of sleep that we do, right? We go to a bed, lay down for like eight hours or more, but they don't do the same exact thing. They'll just rest. Awesome. We learned an incredible amount of information today. And we have over 80 people that are at this field trip, at our first field trip. And I just want to thank all the parents who brought their kids on so they could be part of this field trip. All of you children and all the teachers who joined us because Sorry, I keep on getting muted. <laughs> you did a fantastic job today. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you, Juliana. You know that's one of our treasures coming to the Waterfront Center. So you coming to us today like we used to do when you used to bring the Sea Stars to Ribbon School, this, this truly has been amazing. I, I learned new information about horseshoe crabs too. Awesome. So happy about that. Don't forget, uh, families, you can join us for our secret readers on uh, Fridays at 11. And next Wednesday at 3 o'clock again, we'll have another trip that we'll be telling you about next week. So, Juliana, thank you so much. And please thank Cameron um, and all of our friends at the Oyster Bay Waterfront Center. It was truly thank you so much for having us. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Just before everybody goes, we have um, a craft that you guys had sent us uh, that everyone can print off. It's on the web page that we have, and I also posted it in the chat as a PDF. Um, and I guess Cameron from your group had asked if the kids can just do the craft, and then if you guys want to post it, have your parents post it to either um, either to your Seesaw Journal or to um, our the PTA's Facebook page or Instagram page and tag us in that. That would be amazing. And the Waterfront Center because they wanted to see all the artwork that you guys do too. So we just wanted to say thank you again as well for being a part of this. It was amazing. Thank you. To draw yours. And boys and girls, we're going to send you um, a follow-up activity on Seesaw. So I will send you some more information about horseshoe crabs and some other really cool websites that you can visit if you want to learn more about them. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Juliana. Bye.